You're watching New Car Spin, and this is the genesis of your retirement. It is called the GV80. It's their new SUV flagship, and it comes with four wheels. Uh, as far as SUV goes, this is on par with all the other SUVs. Um, I'm gonna have to see if I can unlock. I don't think I can unlock it with the key. No, while the engine's running, it's set to go around the other side. Looks good though. Inside, you'll see the seats are the same color as a sand trap. Uh, it also has genuine tiger wood. Look at that, that's great. Some people say it looks a lot like a Bentley, but there is a distinct difference. Uh, Bentley gauges are dipped in ox blood, you know, the needles. Uh, here, you could see, if you look closer there, let me zoom in for you. That is clearly dipped in tiger blood. Nice touch. Uh, we also have a uh, water hazard here that holds two cups. This one happens to be leaking. Uh, of course, this one works just fine soaking up some of the liquid in there so it does hold the water quite well the rest of the vehicle though it's not exactly like the g80 i drove this doesn't have soft closed doors it doesn't have a cool sunroof that opens in a butterfly effect like the sedan does with the panoramic roof this has a load brace in between and it doesn't have an alcantara headliner so it's a little disappointing on that front interior wise there's less tiger wood trim and uh it has the same sort of display it's just laid out a little differently so the suv isn't exactly like the sedan i feel like the sedan's a little bit better inside but i mean that could just be me so let's take it on the road and see what it's like seatbelts on of course Obviously, it's a very beautiful day today, and it's accentuated by this twin-turbo V6 that puts out some good power, uh, 360, 380, somewhere around there. You're not lacking. You are totally aware of the power here, and it definitely puts it down. I'll show you right now. Hopefully, the road is clear. Yep, pretty good. So yeah, as far as SUVs go, this power output is pretty substantial. It, it's sort of like, uh, definitely on a V8 level. But then we have to talk about the ride quality. These Dallas roads are not the best, but the way this vehicle rides, it feels a little more like a old school Mercedes. Uh, there's a lot of squat, meaning when you accelerate, the rear end comes down. And there's a lot of dive, meaning when you brake hard, the front end nose down and it, it just dives. So that's another problem, but there's a lot of body roll here. So the car is just doing this all the time. And it's, it's kind of um, unsettling a little bit because you're so high up. And, and, it, and it does that in the G80 as well, the sedan. But here, I feel it a lot more pronounced. Now we have different drive modes. So we can obviously change here into sport. And now we're in sport mode and the seat tightens up a little bit, the changes around. And now you feel a bit more snug in the vehicle. And there's a little bit of engine noise being piped in. I, I would like to call it infused. But the way this vehicle drives, um, it's no Porsche Cayenne, but it, it tries to be, but that's the thing. Uh, let me get to the price in one second. I'll pull the window sticker out of the glove box. Let me pull over for that one. In the meantime, though, uh, it's a beautiful day here and the Genesis blends in quite nicely. It looks really good out here and I haven't washed it since they dropped it off, but still it gets a lot of attention. Let's see gauges. If we press this button here, you'll see you can change through the navigation and the vehicle stats and driving needs. But you'll notice it never lines up 
with the steering wheel. Everything is always to the right. And the gauges seem to be a little skewed as well. And then when you look on the hood, the hood line skews to the right. So there is no like center line for the driver other than the Genesis badge, which is a good or a bad thing, I don't know. But it seems like I can't, I can't ever find center down my lane, constantly adjusting left and right like this. So the sedan just felt a little more uh, refined and it had more features that made it feel obviously more worthy of its price tag. Of course, it did cost more than this. So what we'll do is we'll pull into the shopping center here and take a, take a quick uh, gander at the Monroney. See what happens. Take your best guess at what the price is on this one. Usually the press cars I get are fully loaded. So let's see what they've got for us here. Put it in park. All right, moving on over to the, the uh, out of bounds over there. All right, 65,775 is the total price. It has the advanced package and Everything else is standard. 10 airbags, including front center airbag, you'll see there, that is right here. So this is apparently the famous airbag, or the infamous airbag, uh, that was deployed during a certain incident at a certain time for a certain somebody. Um, forgot who it was though. What else do we have here? Oh yes, the V6, Two, 375 horsepower. Okay, so I was like dead, in, dead wrong. 375 horsepower, 391 pound-feet of torque. It definitely, definitely puts that off quite well it almost feels like it's underrated fuel economy though not so brilliant 20 average what have i been averaging well i mean as an automotive journalist i drive it pretty hard and i've been idling a little bit 14.2 uh see if i go down here on my list 18.3 over 1500 miles so that doesn't include my driving style but yeah we do we do let these cars idle a lot when we take photos and stuff um I do like the air conditioning. It's one of the best air conditioning units. Uh, you you can manually adjust the fan speed while it's still in auto mode. Oh yeah, put this back. This, by the way, right here, these little clips. If you have a Mercedes or here in a Genesis, you'll see these and you'll be like, what is that? That is for a pen. You can put a pen in there. Or if you have one of those pen style uh, tire pressure readers, you can put one in there as well. Good, good fun fact for you, not just on the Genesis. All right, so here we have our main screen and if you hit the home button here or you could use this touchpad or you can use this ring to get around, it will put you into a main menu and then you can go through all the different tiles and there's another layer here, there we go. And we can do things like obviously set up a valet mode, but we can do sounds of nature, so it'll play like nature sounds. A lot of Hondas do that now, Kias, Genesis, they'll have it. Passenger talk, so I can echo myself. Hello, hello, echo. Anyway, echo. Uh. All right, so now we'll go back. Quiet mode, that turns everything down for the back so people can sleep. Uh, climate, notification manual, so there's there's a lot of tech here, and, and hopefully uh, people can understand it of all ages. But uh, we come down here to the air conditioning, and this is where I get confused because there's this nice touch screen, but there are no settings for it here. So you basically, uh, you have to go through that menu to make any changes to the climate system, like auto recirculation and this and that. You can't do it here. So that's a little bit of a disappointment for me. You'll see below this, we have wireless charging. We have USB, and by the way, this does have, let's see if I can pull that out, oh yes. A Lexicon audio system, which has been fantastic. This is a demo uh, USB stick that just basically talks through the 19 speakers and the two subwoofers under the seats. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, it has like three sound modes. If we go into the home screen, we go to media. You'll see here under reference, we can also have audience, 
and then we have on stage, which makes it sound like I am on stage as a performer. So you'll hear like horns behind you and singers in front of you kind of stuff. It's really cool. Let me uh, show you the back seat for all your ratchets. I think I should unlock the door. This is the car where I did lock myself out and lock myself in at the same time. So I'm gonna be very careful here. I was doing a photo shoot and I got back here and somehow the child lock was on and I couldn't get out. Uh, so folding seats as such, uh, no third row, but that's okay. Cause this is, third rows are overrated actually. So this is the fully upright position when you take off and land, as some people have tried. And then there is a recline. So if you pull the handle, you have a huge recline here. So it's a very good road trip car. We also have our sunshades here. I wish it had soft closed doors. So if people were sleeping, you wouldn't have to disturb them. And then uh, you'll notice Rear climate controls, center armrest with another water hazard, okay? But I have no way back here to control the sunroof. So I wish I had a way to open the shades or pop the vent or do something rather than have to ask the driver. But you'll see from back here though, I can move the seat forward. I can make all sorts of adjustments back here so if, if someone's sitting on the passenger side and they want more room, that's very easy to do. Very, very easy to do. So you can see the Lexicon stereo speakers. There's a lot of grills here. We have uh, more back there and they didn't skimp out. They didn't make the far rear one plastic crap. They, they still uh, metal finished it. So, you know, they went all out here. So that's good. Um, you'll see the contrast stitching more tiger wood and sand color. So let's go to show you the subwoofers. Right there, you'll see it. So it's not exactly concealed, but uh, I know on the Rolls Royce Ghost, it's actually in the door sills, but here, uh, you know, you might get some problems here in the long term if you're if you leave your window open in, in the rain or you spill a coffee or something I'm not sure how something that rattles so much when dirt gets in there how it's going to be very easy to clean or vacuum out or any of that so I don't know you will tell me that's about reliability isn't it oh we also have a hidden uh, storage down there for your golf gloves And of course, in the back, there's plenty of room for your golf clubs. There's details in here like knurling on the trim piece here in the water hazard, knurling on the drive mode selector, knurling here on the interface, on the volume and things. Uh, also here on the, yeah, it's on the control stock. It's it's here. It's here over on the window controls and the mirror controls. It's just kind of everywhere. It's ridiculous. It's even on the air vents. So it's almost like the Ram Laramie Longhorn. That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's almost missing filigree, and it would be as decked out as an eighty-eight thousand dollar Ram truck. So that's where we're at with the Genesis, and I think right now we should hit the road. So let me get back on the road. I do actually want to make another point here, which is with this gear selector. Right now we're in drive and if we turn it, it goes into neutral and it's supposed to go into reverse. And so you turn it once and it won't, you kind of have to force it over. But if this was slippery or in my case, if you can't get a good grip on it, um, or let's just say your parents are pretty old and they can't grab things like loosen a jar or anything this won't be very useful for them look i can't even turn it so my foot's on the brake but it just won't move so let's go ahead and put it in drive i'm going to move up here to this parking spot and see if i can reverse okay so we've come up to a spot and i want to reverse so you have to pull it 
turn it and then turn it harder to get it to go into to reverse. It's a little tricky. And I think uh, people who might have hand problems are not going to like this at all. So if you do have a hand issue, uh, let's just say you, you're, uh, it affects your golf swing or something, this might not be the car for you. All right, let's go, let's go to the freeway. Let's see what this thing's like on the freeway. I want you to hear this glorious V6. On my way over, I'm reminded there that the uh, Kia Telluride actually has similar output to this, the V6 twin turbo, but it, it also has a better ride than this car as well. So, you know, if you're looking for something uh, with a third row that's similar to this, it would be the Telluride or the Hyundai Palisade. Of course, they all are from the same company. They're all very similar. But the Genesis, though, is a level above with all of the luxury uh, features in here. It's it's decked out like a like a like a golf club, really. You know, like a country club. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. It's very country clubby in here. Of course, before we hit the freeway, I should talk about fuel economy. We we said it's about 20 average. I'm getting about 18.5. But I think though, if you fill up the tank, you'd have a pretty decent driving range. <laughs> yeah, there's trying too hard, and then there is trying way too hard. At least there's a Florida plate on there. Wow. <laughs> Uh, getting on the freeway pretty exhilarating and with the uh, cameras here you can see that there's you know a good way to see if there's anything in a blind spot you don't have to like turn your head too much you can see right now there's a car in that blind spot who's moved over that's good because there's a pretty big blind spot here. So we'll make our way to the fast lane. Hopefully we'll keep our left blinker on as we do that. So at 80, the seat changes to a sport mode setup and tightens up. And you can see that uh, that we have radar cruise and we'll adjust to the speed of the car in front and it will also steer. I'll demonstrate that in a second, but first things first. Yep, at pretty high speeds, it goes down in a pretty fair way. It's obviously, it's uh, you know going straight. It's, it's not hooking or slicing, which is good to know. And if I go ahead and turn on mode, it then turns on radar cruise. And then if I turn on this button here, it will also steer in the lane. And uh, it's like an autopilot, basically. And uh, I turned it off. Let me turn it back on. There we go. So now it's controlling the whole vehicle in a semi-autonomous way. Obviously, I still want to pay attention to what's going on. But yeah, it's doing all of that by itself. So we'll go ahead and pass that guy because he can't keep a straight speed. These young people. Texting. Great. So there's very little wind noise. And being that it's an SUV, there's hardly any road noise because you're... So being that it's a SUV, you have hardly any road noise. And there's barely any wind noise. So... There you go, the Genesis GV80. Quite a vehicle. I like the sedan more, so if you're ta uh, you know, stuck in between a rock and a hard place with your decisions, I'd say get the sedan with the soft closed doors and the Alcantara. And uh, I, I have a feeling they'll be updating this GV80 relatively quickly. So smash that like button with your golf club and like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for watching.